next guest, uh, one of the great artists uh, worldwide and with two art galleries on Royal Street here in the historic, famous French Quarter. Uh, and, uh, you know, every time I go in the gallery, I'm just impressed with all the great artwork, great paintings. He said he is Peter O'Neill. Peter, welcome to the show. Mitch, how are you? Great to be here. I'm uh, doing great. How are you this evening? Doing fantastic. You know, I uh, I was reading your bio, and it's it's uh, it's one of the most brutally honest bios I've I've seen, um, and uh, I guess it, it's the life of an artist kind of describes that because you you became an artist later in life, and yet you become so successful now. But uh, can you take us a little bit back to uh, how someone goes from uh, you know, doing what you were doing, you actually were involved with real estate at one time as well, and then deciding yep. in their mid-30s to become an artist and, and struggle and then become uh, where you are today. Well, it, it, it's been a great trip, I'll tell you that. I wouldn't change any of it. Um, my bio is who I am. Uh, you know, I, I went through a, a real bad divorce in 96. Um, I had a little breakdown, spent a little time in the hospital. And then when I get out, uh, you know, it was something I always wanted to try. And uh, it was like I was living everybody else's life my own. So I decided to uh, just restart my life. And I got on a Greyhound bus and headed to St. Augustine with about $150 in my pocket and set up on the street and did pencil portraits for $15. Well, and, how did you, uh, you end up deciding to go to St. Augustine, Florida? Um, my brother was a uh, police officer in Daytona Beach, Florida. And he had uh, suggested St. Augustine. He said he'd seen artists out working in the, on the street. And uh, I just figured I'd give it a shot. Did, uh, did you ever find the Fountain of Youth while you were there? No, I'm still looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you found it in another way. You found, uh, your, you found your career, your calling. And so, obviously, it was a, it was a, it was a great decision. It was, a, it was probably the best thing you did in your life. And... Uh, yeah. Um, I think everybody today is looking for, I know I'm looking for Fountain of Youth as I get older and with all these aches and pains, but uh, is, does an artist have to go through, you know, what you went through to become successful? Is that just part of the process? I don't think they have to, to go through it totally, but in order to um, create good work that, that has good communication to it, you have to live. And, you know, if I had to try this when I was 20, Number one, I wouldn't have the discipline to do it because it's something you have to do every day. Um, and number two, I don't have the life experience to, to transfer on the canvas at 20 that I have now. You know, and I, I paint a lot of emotions. I, I portray emotions in my paintings with, with human figures. And, uh, you know, I just never stop witnessing these, these uh, emotions, I guess you could say. Well, you know, my I eye is always open. Yeah, I've, I've seen some of the paintings in the two galleries on Royal Street. It looks like, you you know, in contemporary settings, urban centers, where you have women, looks like attractive women, kind of uh, going through some hard times, kind of alone, sitting in a bar, for example. I don't know if they're waiting for something or they've just, you know, maybe the cards haven't been dealt, uh, the, the ones they expected. Is that uh, part of uh, this... Uh, the, the, the difficulty of life, the, the, the positives, the ups and downs, those kind of things? Absolutely. And, it's, and you know, the, some people see them as, as going through tough times. I see them as strong, independent women um, that can stand on their own and don't need to go out with other people and, and just can experience life on their own. Uh, but there are, there are some paintings where, you know, they've gone through a breakup or they've had a tough day at work or... No, there's other paintings where they're real happy. So I try to convey all the emotions. And uh, being married four times, I've certainly seen a lot of the emotions of women. You know, you should know women very well if you've been married four yeah. times. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like I said, my bio is pretty brutally honest. So. Tell us about uh, Two Minutes of Silence, which was a tribute to 9-11, which was, was probably the hardest thing that Americans have, have did. Something that, that we did not expect would ever happen to this country. <laughs> Uh, it was just just a difficult time, but uh, if there was a positive that came out of it, a lot of people became unified. We became more into our country, more patriotic. Tell us a little bit about uh, Two Minutes of Silence. Sure. Um, I'm from Staten Island, New York, originally. 
So I had a lot of friends that uh, were in the building. Some didn't make it out. And growing up on Staten Island, you either became a cop, fireman, or you worked up on Wall Street. So I was heavily connected in that area. And I actually did work in that area for a long time. Um, for off-track betting, as a town mutual clerk when I was in my young, young 20s. Um, I was actually on a flight to New York that day. Got back to Florida the next day. Uh, they put us down in, in Richmond, and I went right to work at the Easel just to express my grief um, and get my feelings out about the situation. Um, and then the painting took on a life of its own. We gave it to an auction where they were going to raise some money for the guys up there. <laughs> it ended up selling for 20000 We then, uh, to this date, have donated over 17,000 prints of it. They're free from fire stations, police stations, military bases, emergency service personnel uh, locations. Um, and, it, and I made a promise to the guys in New York that as long as I was live, I'd be pushing this image to make sure that we as a country never forgot what happened that day. And we never forgot the heroic acts of, of our fellow Americans. And you, you've got to be proud, too, uh, doing a lot of business here, that, uh, that the, uh, what, what New Orleans people did when they went up to uh, New York to uh, to really Absolutely. help bring food and, and it was just fantastic. What a sacrifice that people in this it shows you what great people we have in character in this city. Yep, and I and, and it's it's it was interesting after Katrina, uh, a lot of the firemen that I met through this tragedy um, had headed to New Orleans to help out down there. So it was just a it was a nice payback. And uh, being an original New Yorker, you know we're we're kind of get a reputation for being distant or rude. Uh, but when there's a problem, we really jump in and help. And, uh, you know, we appreciate all the help that went to New York, and we try to repay it. And, uh, you know, you mentioned about being a, uh, being a, a clerk at, uh, in the horse racing industry, so I'm sure yeah. you're crossing your fingers. I am, too. That uh, And we've interviewed the trainer, uh, Art Sherman, as well as Victor Espinosa, the jockey, who are two great guys, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you think about Art Sherman – He's been in the business 60 years, and his 60th year might be his greatest year if Cal Chrome can pull it off. So I'm, I assume you're pulling for him in a couple of weeks uh, at Belmont Park on, on that Absolutely. side. Absolutely, it's at Belmont. Hope he can make the long track. Well, let's hope so. It's, it's, it's always a question, that mile and a half and that third race in five weeks. But uh, let's, let's hope because it would be great for the sport. Uh, Peter, thanks, Absolutely. Ag yeah, thanks again for joining us. I, I really appreciate your uh, being so genuine and honest with us. Uh, and uh, it, you know, through the, your your travails, you've uh, you've made it, and you're a very successful. And I and I think you have the great artwork on Royal Street. I'm really impressed with that work. So I wish you all the success as you continue to to thrive in business in New Orleans. Thanks, Mitch. I appreciate it, and a, and a big thank you to New Orleans for the great support they've given me there. It's, uh, my favorite town, and we're trying to move a close, move, move, move a little closer there. Absolutely. Th more time there. Right, and, uh, and again, all the success in the world. Thanks again for joining us, and have a great evening. Thanks for having me, Mitch. Take Thank care. You're welcome. All that right. was artist Peter O'Neill. He has two art galleries on Royal Street, and that's a great tribute to uh, the 9-11, uh, two minutes of silence, raising money for the firemen. And again, it w you have to be proud of, uh, of the, what the people in this town did when they came up there and fed all those people up in the New York after 9-11. Then they reciprocated, of course, when they came down here after Hurricane Katrina. Uh, I want to thank all my great guests this evening. Secretary of State for the great state of Georgia, Aga, Secretary Brian Kemp, also Ace Lynn Hinyup uh, from W.